Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Saul again, and I am here with another read aloud um, lesson for you today. And today we're going to be reading a book called Swimmy. Hmm. And this was written by Leo Leone. And this story is about a fish who is different than the rest. And something pretty tragic happens at the beginning. That means something terrible. And you will see as we read how Swimmy handles that. And um, while we're reading, I'm going to be showing you and I want you to also think about what is the main idea of this story? What do you think it's mostly about? What do you think the author wanted you to take from the story? And remember that details are things you could use to prove that you know this is the main idea, okay? So we're gonna be talking about that. Um, and so let's get started, here we go. Swimmy by Leo Leone. Just like our other book, Leo Leone is also the illustrator of this book. So author and illustrator. A happy school of little fish lived in a corner of the sea somewhere they were all red. Only one of them was as black as a mussel shell. There he is. He swam faster than his brothers and sisters. His name was Swimmy. So take a look at that. Look at all of those red fish, all his brothers and sisters, and he's the only one that is black. That's how he's different from his brothers and sisters. So, um, he, it also said not only is he black, which made him different, um, he is the fastest swimmer. I wonder if him being different is going to affect how things happen in this story or what happens to swimming. Let's keep reading. One bad day, a tuna fish, swift, fierce, and very hungry came darting through the waves. In one gulp, he swallowed all the little red fish. Only Swimmy escaped. I think this is what I meant when I was saying something tragic happens in the beginning. Look at this. This big fish came and ate all of Swimmy's brothers and sisters. He's the only one that escaped. Well, I think maybe there's two reasons why Swimmy escaped. Number one, he was a different color. So the, this big fish was probably focusing on those bright red fish and that's who he went after. Swimmy was black, so he maybe didn't even realize he was part of this group of fish. And I think another reason is because we learned that Swimmy was the fastest swimmer. So maybe he was able to swim away faster than his brothers or sisters. But I will tell you, I feel so sad for Swimmy right now. I wonder what's gonna happen. Let's keep reading. He swam away in the deep, wet world. He was scared, lonely, and very sad. Oh, I would imagine you would feel all of those things if you just lost your whole family. There he goes, all by himself. It's pretty brave of him, isn't it? That he just keeps swimming. But the sea was full of wonderful creatures. And as he swam from marvel to marvel, Swimmy was happy again. Hmm. It says that Swimmy swam from marvel to marvel. Let's think about what that word marvel means. He swam from marvel to marvel. And it also said he, the sea was full of wonderful creatures. Well, can you turn and talk to somebody? What do you think the word marvel means there? I'm gonna read the sentence one more time. But the sea was full of wonderful creatures, and as he swam from marvel to marvel, Swimmy was happy again. So turn and talk to someone next to you. What do you think marvel means? Hmm. Okay, I have an idea. If you didn't have anybody to turn and talk to, you could always just think like I did. So I think the word marvel means something amazing. Okay, uh, it says that the sea was full of wonderful creatures and then he swam from marvel to marvel. So Leo Leone kind of gave us a clue about what marvel probably means, even if we didn't know for sure. 
because there's so many wonderful creatures and he's seeing all of them. He's swimming from Marvel to Marvel. He's swimming from wonderful creature to wonderful creature. So I think Marvel is just another word that means amazing or wonderful. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot a sentence. He saw a Medusa made of rainbow jelly. Wow, boys and girls. This is a jellyfish called a Medusa jellyfish. It does look like a rainbow and jellyfish totally look like they're made of jelly. A lobster who walked about like a water moving machine. It's a cool looking lobster. Strange fish pulled by an invisible thread. Mm, look at them. They do kind of look like zombies, like, like they're just swimming in one direction and something's just pulling them that way. It's not really, but they just kind of look like they're, they're swimming without thinking at all. A forest of seaweeds growing from sugar candy rocks. Well, these rocks on the ocean floor sure do look like little pieces of candy. And you know what I'm thinking right now, friends? Swimmy sure is brave because his, he lost all his brothers and sisters. He's all by himself in the big ocean. And you know, he knows that a bigger fish could eat him, but he's not just giving up. He's swimming, he's keep, you know, he just keeps going. Kind of reminds me of Dory, right? From Nemo. She, she says, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, right? It's kind of like him here. He saw an eel whose tail was almost too far away to remember. So by the time he swam past this eel and got over to here, he almost forgot what the end of his tail looked like. That's how long the eel was. And sea anemones who looked like pink palm trees swaying in the wind. Sea anemones. That also reminds me of Nemo. I remember that. Um, Nemo and his dad lived in a sea anemone. They do kind of look like palm trees. Then, hidden in the dark shade of rocks and weeds, he saw a school of little fish, just like his own. <gasps> Friends, look over here. Oh boy, he's swimming and swimming, and now he has found another group of fish that look just like his brothers and sisters. Let's go and swim and play and see things, he said happily. We can't, said the little red fish. The big fish will eat us all. But you just can't lie there, said Swimmy. We must think of something. So, boys and girls, he found a whole school of fish. This makes me super happy because poor Swimmy was all alone. And they're hiding. Why are they hiding? And why is Swimmy not hiding? Can you turn and talk to somebody for a minute? Why do you think the red fish are hiding? And why do you think Swimmy's not? Go ahead and turn and talk. I'm gonna give you a minute. I'm gonna think too. Okay. So here's what I think. Maybe it's what you think too. I think the redfish are hiding because they've probably seen other little fish getting, eat, getting eaten by big fish and they're afraid. I think they're hiding because they're afraid. And I think Swimmy isn't hiding because I, I think he realized, well, number one, he knows he's a fast swimmer, but I think he realizes like you have to go out and explore and not be afraid. I think that's why he's just swimming along and he doesn't have anybody to hang out with and hide with either. He'd be awful lonely, at least when he's swimming through the ocean, he can see all these amazing creatures along the way. But I love that Swimmy says, you can't just lie there and hide. We must think of something. I wonder what they're gonna think of. Let's see. Swimmy thought and thought and thought. Then suddenly he said, I have it. We are going to swim all together like the biggest fish in the sea. Wow, that seems like a really good idea, boys and girls. I bet all the big fish will think it's an, a, a really even bigger fish. 
let's see how this works out. Guys, I gotta tell you, I don't know if you're having a connection, but I'm having another connection. This is again reminding me of um, Finding Nemo because in that movie, um, remember that Marlin and Dory meet those fish and they form all different shapes by squishing themselves together. Remember that? Let's remind me of that. Let's see if they do the same thing. He taught them to swim close together, each in his own place. Oh, I think we were right. Look at this. They're starting to look like the shape of a fish. So all those little fish are swimming in the shape of a big fish. It's a really good idea. And when they had learned to swim like one giant fish, he said, I'll be the eye. Wow, look at that. Look, when I go far away, do you see how it just looks like one big giant fish? Look at that, but it's all the little tiny red fish and swimmy is the eye. You know, I noticed that the red fish really listen to swimmy. I wonder why they do. Hmm. Turn and talk to somebody next to you again or think, why do you think the little red fish all listen to swimmy? And, and, you know, did what he said. Why did they trust him? Go ahead and think about it. I'm going to think too. Three, two, one. Okay, let's discuss. So here's what I was thinking. Um... I think that the fish trusted Swimmy because remember, they were hiding, but they saw Swimmy come swimming through the ocean towards them. And I think they felt like, hey, if that little fish was swimming around in the big ocean with the big fish, he must know something we don't know. So I think just because they saw what he had been doing, it kind of made them trust him. They figured he must be doing something right, so let's give it a try. Plus, I think they probably figured it's got to be better than hiding all the time. And so they swam in the cool morning water and in the midday sun and chased the big fish away. Look, that's just like the kind of fish that ate Swimmy's brothers and sisters. And now those big fish think this is an even bigger fish and they're just swimming away from it. They're like, ooh, what is that thing? I'm afraid of it. It looks even bigger than me. I better get out of here. So interesting. So his plan had really worked. And you know what? They worked together as a team. They had to trust each other. When you're on a team, you have to trust each other. And they trusted Swimmy for sure. And clearly they saw that this plan works. That's the end. Okay, so friends, let's talk about what the main idea and details are in this book. So I think what Leo Leone really wanted to show us in this book, what I think is the main idea here is that um, you have to work together with people to do things, okay? That working together can solve problems. Being a team player and using teamwork is important. I think that was the main idea here. And some details I can use to help me are, well, first of all, remember when Swimmy's brothers and sisters um, got gobbled up by that big fish, they weren't using teamwork there. They were just kind of all swimming for their own lives, right? And they wound up getting eaten. I think another detail that tells me that this book is, the main idea is probably about using teamwork, um, is that they work together. Swimmy showed them how to form the shape of a big fish. And they only were able to do that because they trusted Swimmy and they listened to him, kind of like he was like their coach or, you know, their teacher or their mom or dad or big brother. So they treated him and trusted him like somebody that was important to them, that they, you know, knew they could listen to and would give them good advice. Um, and I think another detail is that it worked when they all worked together and swam together like one big fish. They were able to swim safely through the ocean. So friends, I hope you enjoyed our story, Swimmy, 
and I hope that you have a wonderful day. And I just wanted to say from all of the first grade teachers, we love you guys and we miss you and we can't wait to see you again. Bye.